Last night's Spence versus Crawford, the fight, was a hype job, right? This was supposed to be Hagler Hearns, um, Hagler Leonard, right? It was going to be a great fight. However long it lasted, it was going to be competitive, right? Now, forget about all the crazy fanboys who the other week said that Inoue was going to get stopped after he got schooled and dominated, right? Like, those people, they just say what they want to see happen, right? But the people who really thought about this fight and wanted to give their honest breakdown opinion, even, even those that stated, not everybody, some people said this would happen, but they also said, well, that because Spence was drained, that's why this would happen, right? But the... The betting public, right, or the fans, and I checked out polls, was split basically 50-50. It was like 52-51 for Terrence Crawford. And everybody thought it was going to be long, grueling, tough fight for both guys, right? This was like Terrence Crawford, like a star amateur's debut, right, against... A bum with 30 losses. Now, Terrence Crawford is a great fighter. Like, okay, no, well, his skills are great, right? He's got great skills, no doubt about it. But Arrow spent, so, because what you were looking at, right? The way it looked was a pound for pound level fighter versus a debutante, right? Now, Spence is, I've always said he was overrated because I, I always vehemently opposed the notion that he's a pound-for-pound pound fighter. He wasn't. I've always stated that, right? But Crawford was supposed to be small, which I didn't buy. I told you he wasn't. But Spence's size was supposed to, you know, give him the, the chance in this fight. He was going to be able to take Crawford's punches well enough to, to be in there, to be competitive, right? So, as good as the eye test tells you Crawford is, and now people are saying he's better than Mayweather. Come on, man. Come on. Really? Let me take a sip of my coffee. Right? Um, he, on, from, from everything that, that we've been told, and from everything that we've seen from spent right he's not a bum but he was in this fight and no it's not because Crawford made him look like a bum right fucking when Golovkin fought Sharemeta right you want to call that guy a bum I got no problem Golovkin who is a verifiable crushing puncher in his natural weight division right not Crawford who moved up through the weights and then his power just like all of a sudden became amazing it went from good right to just like absolutely amazing when he just touches you and and you're drunk right Golovkin was pounding on that dude over and over and the guy kept getting up and fighting hard right and that was a pound for pound level fighter versus a bomb this wasn't even that I mean look at this shit Go rewatch this over and over and over. You could barely hear these punches. You you hear you hear Crawford breathing, and not really these punches, right? And look at look at Spence. He's drunk, right? That landed on the shoulder, that grazed the shoulder, and touched him a little bit, right? Touched the head a little bit. Maybe not even. Maybe didn't even touch him. And then you had this. Push jab. And the dude is just... He was done after that, right? So... Calling Spence pound for pound, that never made any sense. But how does... How do people just... Look at this, right? 
and give Terence Crawford credit for fighting a pound for pound guy. Now, even if, if Spence in some alternate universe really was a pound for pound fighter based on the things that he had achieved, right? Was that the guy you saw in the ring, right? Because Spence was never hard to hit. He had good tight defense, but because he came at you and he threw a lot of punches, you always saw him hit. And he's gotten, and have you ever seen him in all those times that he's gotten hit? And he's gotten hit plenty by Danny, right? Big puncher. Um, have you ever seen him react like this to punches? Right? So the guy was absolutely drained. He had to have been, right? A lot of people predicted he would be. I wanted to resist that notion because I wanted to see a good fight. Who was it? Carl Frampton. I was listening to his prediction and he said that Spence is punchy, right? But in his prime. And that didn't make sense to me. That's absolutely incoherent, right? Pick one. Either he's punchy or he's in his prime. Right? Now, I didn't think either guy was in his prime. But... I didn't think he was just a shot. Absolutely done. And, you know, maybe he'll, you know, be better at 154, but I don't even... It's just... Especially after the beating that he took here. I don't know, man. I just don't know. So... <sighs> boxing, once again, <laughs> sold us a bill of goods. It was just... You know, so much as people hyped this shit up, right? For years, and here it is. This is what I want to say. I keep hearing how uh, the fight is not past its due date, right? This was this was the thing I, I couldn't understand. So many people saying that Spence is drained, right? But the fight's happening at the right time. It's like... They just, they just wanted to see Spence executed, right? Subconsciously, on some level. So much as they talked about, you know, a great fight, Hagler Hearns, yada fucking yada, right? Subconsciously, they probably wanted to sp see Spence executed. I just wanted to see a good fight. And this wasn't a good fight. This was a pound-for-pound -pound level fighter versus a fucking debutante. Who was lacing a pair of gloves for, for the third time in his life. That's what it looked like. So, while the skill with Crawford... Like, it's definitely there, right? But look at these dudes he's fighting. The pattern just remains the same. There's always something fucking wrong with these dudes he's fighting. Because it's... Look. Take another sip. It... It's... Anybody, not anybody, but anybody who's been in the gym and, you know, has shadow boxed and whatever, maybe sparred a little bit, done some work. When they get on the heavy back, they're, they're going to look great, right? They're going to look a lot better than when they're in the ring and someone's throwing meaningful, hard fucking punches at them and hitting them, right? And this happens at the in the professional level, too. This happened to Crawford in this first first round. He looked a little bit uncomfortable, right? Because Spence was coming at him and, and he was hitting him. And he was putting on a tremendous amount of pressure on him in spots. And Crawford looked uncomfortable. Maybe for the very first time ever. He looked un legitimately uncomfortable. Didn't look great. Right? But then he pulled it together and he touched Spence with the fucking jab. You know what I mean? And all of a sudden all of his confidence was 100% restored and... It was just easy saving. He lands one fucking jab and it's just... It goes from a fight where he looks uncomfortable to just smooth sailing. After one fucking jab. But I'm, but I'm supposed to believe that he beat a pound-for-pound -pound level fighter, right? And he deserves to be number one pound-for-pound. -pound. If you just look at the paper, right? What's written on the paper, then yeah. Two-time undisputed. Yeah, I mean... He's got the best resume on paper in boxing right now. 
just looking objectively at the accomplishments. You can't deny him that. But when you look at what's actually happening in the ring, as good as he is, like what is wrong with his opponents? He touches Kel... We know what was wrong with Kel Brook. I've covered that in great detail. We know what was wrong with him. And it made sense that a little tap jab would send him reeling and absolutely drunk and hurt, right? But Spence, right, who was able to take prime Kel Brooks, or maybe not so much prime anymore after he was coming off that eye injury, but still punching hard, still good, right? I mean, beat the shit of Amir Khan, so I mean, he couldn't have been that bad. Past prime Brook couldn't have been... And that was a much better version of Brook that Spence fought anyway, right? But he was able to take flush shots from Brook, right? Early in the fight. And when Brook, at that point of his career, hit you, right? You saw the effects, right? Brook had legitimate power. Comparable to Crawford, I would say, right? Probably. But then he gets in the ring with butt and he can't take a fucking jab, right? And it, it this gets hyped as, you know, great fight. Uh, this was just like a ritual execution, right? And all of a sudden, Spence is, whereas on the PBC side, right, he's allowed to low blow the shit out of all these other PBC fighters, right? Al's favorites. And then they put him in the ring with Crawford, and he can't do any of that, right? Crawford's going to be fighting on the PBC from now on, isn't he? And it's this is what happens in boxing, right? You get If you serve a fighter up, one of your own, right, with hardware, and you put the fight on, and, and he's maybe a slight, even a slight A side, you get options on, on the winner, right? Yeah. I get it. That that's how it works, right? But Spence already got that slave contract, right? With Al. And it looks to me, we'll see what happens. Looks to me like they just brought Crawford into the fold, right? Or maybe maybe all this promoter stuff, right? That we always see playing out all these promotional battles and and that's that struggle that's going on at a certain level right like that's that's pretty real to a certain degree but ultimately there is you know a shadow government when it comes to boxing the casinos right that that really ultimately call the shots right because a lot of times you hear like for example oh bob Arum fixed the fight for devin haney and then bob Arum is like sorry and kind of apologetic and did he? Because, I mean, it doesn't look like Haney's going to be fighting on top rank in his next fight. Right? It, was it really Bob Arum's doing? Or are their powers more powerful in boxing than, than we care to admit? Probably the latter, right? So, look, these gloves from Bud, they don't look like them other gloves he had you know, against Avenician, right? So I'm not saying there was anything wrong with the gloves. But at the same time, I'm not going to complain when people start questioning, right? Because well, where the fuck did the punching power come from? You know what I mean? This isn't supposed to be okay. And, and this is very, very clear when the B-side or a foreign fighter does doesn't even do anything similar because Pacquiao's punching power actually diminished as he went up in through the weights. It actually diminished at 147. He couldn't stop these dudes. He could still hurt them. He could still beat the shit out of them. But he couldn't one punch knock them out like he used to be able to. Right? So that narrative was all false anyway. But because it was... People lied to themselves about it. And it was presumed that Pacquiao's power had gotten better as he moved up. I automatically meant roids, right? Automatically. As if his opponents were clean. You know what I mean? Let me take another sip. So, <clears throat> as much as people complain about gloves when there's nothing to complain about, anyway, right? The other night. 
There's nothing. Everything was legal. Everything was a-okay. And then, despite the fact that he didn't do anything wrong in the first place, he still wrapped his hands the way um, Fulton's handlers wanted him to. And, and the result was still the same, which should have been expected because the result is always the same, no matter where Inoue fights, whatever the jurisdiction rules are, and they're not all the same. He wraps his hands in accordance with the rules, and the result is always the same, right? But, but even after that fight, people are still saying they were wrong to accuse him of anything. They were wrong complaining about his hand wraps in the first place. And after he did what they wanted him to do, they still complain, right? So they were just a million percent wrong before, after, all the way around, right? But they're still doing it. So, how, so if somebody comes out, and with Crawford, we have proof. He knocked the guy out with illegal gloves, right? And he was allowed to do this. The establishment saw that the gloves were illegal and they just said, fuck it. Your bud, rules don't apply to you, right? Your Spence, if you ain't fighting Crawford, rules don't apply to you. You could hit the guy on the dick as much as you want. And then two dudes to whom rules don't apply get in the ring and all of a sudden they're enforcing the rules on the guy that's supposed to be the A side. Well, that's weird. Right? And he can't take a fucking jab. He can't take a fucking jab. And he gets broken down with the... Every punch Crawford landed on him had effect. And he hadn't landed shit up until this point. He lands, I don't know, maybe the third somewhat clean, decent scoring blow. Let's just call it that, right? And, and that first punch just breaks Spence down and he can't recover from it, right? Just like Kell Brook. Spence who's taken big punches from big punchers. Who's taken many, 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 many more punches, right? Which is why I was told and thought that this was going to be a good fight. Which is why I was told Spence was a certain level fighter. However overrated he may have been, well, compared to what we saw in the ring, of course he was, right? No matter where you rated him, he was much better than this. Which is why this was going to be a good fight. And then it turns out that he's not as advertised. In this fight, at least, right? Whatever happened to him, and I think he was just weight trained. And maybe he had a rehydration clause. I don't know. Right? But, but this fight was a dud. Let's just keep it real. I know 50% of boxing fans out there are going to be extremely happy because their guy got the win. But if you're a real boxing fan, you can't tell me this was a good fight. Maybe you enjoyed it for the first few rounds, but it got to a point where it just didn't make any sense. Now again, I'm not saying the referee should have stopped it. But Errol's team, because they know what he went through to get to this point, they know what's in that contract. They know all this shit. For them to keep him in there, that's just disgraceful, man. Because the writing was on the wall. And he was just taking a beating for no reason. And he had nothing. For, Crawford was letting him off the hook. Right? This, this reminded me of Klitschko Briggs. Right? Carrying him to, to get the advertisement money. Maybe that's what it was all about. Maybe they wanted more money. Uh, maybe they wanted people to, to bet on the over or something. I don't know. I don't care what anybody says. I, I think it's obvious, right? That Errol Spence was drained. And, and I, I know people are gonna. Some people are gonna say, oh, "Well, maybe not anymore." If, if they are still here, um, I'm not saying it was Bud's fault. I'm not saying it was anybody's fault. I'm blaming boxing, right? I'm blaming everybody because boxing allowed this to happen, right? They hid the way in from us, right? And I guess it's gonna be a thing from now on, which 
it just fucks over the betters. Cause if how how did Spence look on them scales at noon or whatever time it was in Vegas when when they weighed in? What did he look like? Hmm? Did he look like Kell Brook? Right? Was he drinking water? I told you guys they were gonna hide this shit from us. Cause enough people were catching on when. Crawford and Brooke stepped on them scales and Brooke was right that was the real way in and you saw it in Brooke's face and physique and that the way he talked and how slowly he was, was blinking all them things I've talked about in the past right the guy just looked like he was in slow motion and then you had Crawford right there with his power raid or whatever the hell he was sipping on right <laughs> PEDs probably let's keep it real look Look, if a motherfucker is allowed to knock a guy out with illegal gloves f for the whole world to see right in your face, right? He's allowed to knock a dude out with gloves that are illegal, right? PEDs ain't even against the Marcus of Queensbury rules. They're illegal in some way, shape, or form, but not as not as illegal, if that makes any sense, as as loaded gloves. So if the motherfucker's allowed to knock somebody out in broad daylight, so to speak, for everyone to see what, when the lights are bright, knock out an opponent with illegal gloves, why wouldn't he be able to do PEDs? Why not? Why not? I mean, am I making sense? And we know drug testing is weaponized, and maybe that's what happened to Spence. Probably. You know what I mean? So, yeah, this is, this this whole idea, right, it's not saying, re replying to me, it's not Bud's fault, right? Well, you're agreeing with me then. You're agreeing with me that, that Spence was drained, and it just, it butt hurts, right? It must. And I'm not, I'm not even talking about that. I'm not placing blame on any individual here. And then, another thing to preempt, because, you know, it's going to be their excuses. Okay, yeah, and what's your point? You're agreeing with me, right? You're All you're saying is just, is I wish you wouldn't speak the truth, right? Because it, once again, butt hurts. That's all that that ever means, excuses. Right? Unless you mean, by excuse, you mean, I'm not telling the truth. I'm just making shit up, right? Well, then provide some evidence, because I just showed you evidence. I showed you evidence in the past. I've described all the evidence that we've all seen, right? What's your evidence that Errol Spence was the same Errol Spence as always and not drained? Where's your evidence? That's not the evidence before us. So, yes, of course, I'm excusing... Errol Spence's poor performance. Just that, just about everybody probably picking Bud did before the fight. So why are you mad, right? You said he was drained. A lot of people did. You agree with them. You agree with their prediction. I didn't see any Bud Crawford fans coming out saying, responding to, let's say, Steve Kim, who said Spence was drained, right? No, he's not. He's 100%, right? He's going to be stronger than ever. I never saw nobody contest any of these people, right? Not but fans. So so you were cool with the excuse then. You should be cool with it now. Yeah, I'm excusing his poor performance by the fact that he looked weak. He looked drained, right? He's the bigger dude. He, he was cons That was considered for those who were giving him a chance to, to, to be competitive in this fight. That was the thing that was going to keep him in the fight, even even if he lost. But he didn't even have that. He was weak as fuck. Obviously, he was drained. Right? He was weight drained. Does that take away from Crawford's performance? Well, it has to, right? It has to. Because if he did that to a perfectly healthy Spence, right? We would have gotten a great fight. And we didn't get a great fight. 
So everybody who said this was Hagler Hearns, the greatest fight in boxing, Max Kellerman over there calling this the greatest sporting events in sports. I mean, it, it's all fine and good to say that before the fight. I was hoping it would be. I thought it would be a good sporting event, right? Compet that means competitive fight for those of you who don't understand what, what the best sporting event is, right? That means we get a battle. That means we get a great battle. We didn't. This was a terrible mismatch. This was a pound for pound fighter versus a bum. That's what this was. And you can't tell me on the one hand that Spence was gonna, Pacquiao was lucky Spence got injured, right? Spence was gonna put Pacquiao in the grave, destroy him, blah, 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 smash him up. Just about everybody unanimously said it. But fans too, right? You can't tell me that and then tell me that this this Spence would have done that. That's not, it's not the same. You can't hype him up so much and then we get this and everyone's just like, well, I'm cool with that, right? No, no, don't don't make excuses. Don't talk about what happened to Spence, right? It was going to be a great fight, but it wasn't. No need to explain why. Just just accept it, right? Don't talk about it. Well, I mean, it is what it is, man. Yeah, I'm, of course I'm making excuses for Spence. Yeah, for, I'm excusing his poor performance. By the obvious fact that he couldn't take a little tap jab. That little tap jab broke him down. Visibly. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> and, and boxing just keeps doing this to us. There's always a fucking asterisk by, by these fights. And nobody, almost nobody wants to talk about this. It's It's like... They just go into a fit of rage. A lot of people do if, if you mention this stuff. If, if you talk about that, which is right in front of you, right? They get upset or they just ignore it. Uh, they call you a theorist, right? When, I mean, you're, for us, boxing is all theoretical. 95% of the shit is theory. You're all, always theorizing about everything. So, okay, why can't I? You know what I mean? You're always theorizing about who's going to get robbed, what they're going to do to Haney when he goes to Australia, what they're going to do to Fulton when he goes to Japan, right? You're, you're a conspiracy theorist, right? I'm talking about the shit. We're both theorizing, but I'm talking about the shit that's right in front of you, right? And I'm not really blaming any group or, or individuals that get together and do this. I'm not even doing that in this video. So that I'm not alleging any kind of conspiracy. I think it's well, maybe a little bit with them hiding those weigh-ins from us. Right? Yeah, a little... Yeah, there's clearly a conspiracy going on to fuck the betters. Right? Clearly. To make these fights... Because look at it like this, right? If we see Spence just looking like a skeleton on the scales and Bud looks, you know, he looks drained, but not as bad. Spence steps off that scale and he's like stumbling. He needs peop He got people holding him, him up, right? And Bud is all good. Bud starts drinking water right away and Spence just sitting there looking fucking sorry for himself, right? Anybody with a pair of fucking eyes and some experience will not pick Spence. No way. That's why I said we need to see the weigh-in. And we didn't get to see the weigh-in. Right? Because we need to see the weigh-in. And they don't want us to see the weigh-in. Why? Because they want to present to us these two guys who look a little drawn. You know, they look skinny. But they look in tremendous shape on those scales. Right? 12 hours, 10 hours later. After they had time to rehydrate. Right? Yeah, they look like they suffered to make the weight, but man, they look in great shape, both of them. Wow, this really will be Hagler Hearns, right? It's all fucking illusions, man. And that's why they they started hiding the weigh-ins from us. So that everybody gets excited for a Hagler Hearns, right? A great competitive battle, the greatest sporting event that could 
happen right now in all of sports, according to Max Kuckerman, right? All these, the fight ain't happening. The fight is happening at the right time. All this other nonsense, right? And then they, we get in the ring and it's a fucking pound for pound level guy versus a bomb, right? Wah, wah, wah.